Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. Here I have a great article for you guys from Fierce Wireless. I'll leave a link to it in the description so you guys could check it out. So this is a Verizon Network update. Kyle Milady was interviewed recently at Mobile World Congress, and he gave his take on net neutrality and also talking about his new role at Verizon running, running the business, uh, Verizon Business Group. But he also gave some interesting tidbits on his, you know, thoughts around network slicing and 5G standalone. He used to be Verizon's CTO. He used to be in charge of the network. So he's very familiar with, with those terms. So in terms of network slicing, Milady said it wouldn't be like throttling other users in favor of enterprises. We think about it more as living up to, to SLAs, he said. But the whole topic of network slicing is not that urgent for Verizon at this time anyway, because network slicing requires a standalone 5G core, which of course Verizon has not public or commercially deployed. And neither Verizon nor AT&T have full 5G SA networks yet. In fact, Milady said we're only testing standalone right now it's just making sure we have all the technologies technologies aligned along with the devices. We're doing POC and testing and making sure we can orchestrate everything. There's no compelling use case for Verizon overall to go after standalone right now. Meanwhile, T-Mobile, which does have a 5G standalone network, announced this week that its network slicing capabilities are available to developers nationwide so just you know they had to throw it throw t-mobile in there comparatively speaking because t-mobile is launching everything first but he is right kaya Milady is right there is no use case right now for this right there is no urgent need really for 5g standalone it's not like there is a certain product in the market space today that requires a 5g standalone connection Right. The way it is today, NSA, everybody can use the network today. Right. It's not like like I said, it's not like there's a specific app that will require you to be on a 5G standalone core. So this is just T-Mobile really just, you know, flexing in that sense their 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 leadership on 5G that they have the cores all convert converted. Uh, modernized stuff like that but nothing for the user right the user experience nothing will really change you know even if t-mobile goes you know voice over nr they 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 commercially deploy the official network slicing it's 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 not going to change it's not going to drastically change the user experience there might be an app a use case in the future that you'll notice it on but for now it's 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 really overblown in my opinion and that's really what Verizon is trying to say but there's also the crowd that is saying well you know Verizon would have to speak like that because they really can't dedicate you know a big chunk of the spectrum right now to move everything to 5G standalone right there's a lot of areas or a good amount of areas where they don't even have low band to dedicate to 5G for voice over NR and that's in the PCS markets where they don't have any 850. And we all know Verizon still has a ton of users on LTE, so they can't do anything with band 13 right now, 10 by 10. Right? I I don't think it's a certified NR band right this uh, right at this moment. And even if it was, what are they going to do? 5 by 5 on 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 LTE and 5 by 5 on 5G. Again, you're you're trying to force it at that point because there's there's not a lot of performance is going to come from 5 by 5. So there is, you know, there isn't really a lot of spectrum right now that Verizon can dedicate for this. So this the C band got it. They can they they have that for five G N R right millimeter wave got it. They can stand alone that, but they're gonna have to start slowly dedicating all the other channels, the the PCS, the AWS, and eventually they got to get some low band channels. They got to get a hold of more low band. Six hundred would have been very important for Verizon. Although they recently disclosed why they didn't go for it, right? They said that there isn't an ecosystem of, uh, uh, there wasn't at the time, there wasn't an ecosystem. It wasn't used uh, on a worldwide basis. 
there there was hardly any equipment for it they said and radios they they had no software for it so they had to develop all that and truck roll to all the sites to upgrade them again upgrade the baseband's again and they just didn't want to do that right T-Mobile had to go through all that T-Mobile had to spend 8 billion dollars on the spectrum they had to truck roll and, and, and upgrade all their sites again deploy that big big panel that you see upgrade the baseband units again with with new software cards they had to do all that they had to get device support that's another thing Verizon said they really didn't have 600 megahertz device support on the existing base so that's something T-Mobile had to go through and now you know that paid off paid off in a big way for T-Mobile T-Mobile can now dedicate a slice of low band for voice over NR they have high usage right now on the 5G so they can start moving over PCS AWS so that paid off for T-Mobile but eventually right in non 850 markets band 5 markets Verizon is going to need some they're going to need some more low band Right. Hopefully it's 900 megahertz that maybe the FCC will make available something. They're going to need more low band. But other than that, those are just the, the, the two takes, right? The the take from, from Kyle Malady saying that, you know, there's no rush. There's no urgency. There's really no use case. And then the other people out there, they're saying, well, Verizon really doesn't have that great of a spectrum portfolio to really go, you know 5g standalone M mainly mainly low band right low band is very important it's a very important layer you can't neglect it right i mean you could possibly densify more and and, and build more indoor solutions but you know nothing beats the, the the penetration of the of that low band so make sure you guys stay tuned for more like share subscribe follow my social media outlets this is tyrone with tech live see y'all in the next one peace